there, and welcome to the Animag Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to episode three of the Animag Podcast. It's your host Asylum, sitting here with Thomacus. What's up everybody? I love how you always have this extreme, like, delayed hey whenever I introduce you. <laughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start editing a drum roll in while we wait for you to say hi. I think for the next one, I'm gonna just let it sit there so the drum roll can go a little just bit. Just see. Longer. Just see how long it can actually fucking go. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Episode three. We fucking made it. Thank God. I'm going to tell you, I'm not looking forward to doing this podcast, but the thing that excites me is that it's finally over. Yes. It's not it that this that was a bad, bad show. Yeah, it, it was... Okay, if you had to describe it in one word, what would your word be? All right. All right. <laughs> I was going to say mediocre. <laughs> yeah, there was some points in the show that was like, ugh. And it was like not pertaining to the theme of the anime, but like there was, there, there was one highlight that I love. I'll say eighty percent of the show was meh. <laughs> if you guys don't meh. know what you guys don't know what we're talking about, we're doing the this is a review episode for Masamune Kun's Revenge, the show that y'all recommended and we picked. And uh, I'm starting to question if we should ever pick one of your recommendations ever again. <laughs> Maybe we should let. No, we we'll do. Like we'll definitely randomize the thing to draw. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. We'll still pick y'all uh, suggestions. Just this one, I got my hopes up honest, for. To be honest, the title should have been something else. Yeah, it should have been something completely different. We'll we'll definitely get into it. <sighs> when you read the description of the show, you start to think like, wow, this is going to be a really well-written show. Because with a plot like this, they could do a lot in the anime world. And they just, they missed, you know when you're like hammering a nail into a board? They just completely yeah. missed the fucking nail. And then they just th start throwing random shit in there because most of it felt like filler. Filler. Like half of the show was filler. It wasn't uh, until like episode five that I was jazzed up. Let's dive in so we don't have to fucking backtrack and end up there. So obviously your main character uh, is Masamune Makabe. He yes. used to be a fat kid. And now he is a health conscious nut. Like he doesn't like to eat foods and that'll make him fat. And he's always working out. He kind of self labels himself as like, you know, the hot guy on campus now because he is really physically fit. Yes. And another thing is if he does eat something, he will do his best to work it out. This dude, he'll, he looked at a fried shrimp later in the episode, <laughs> in the season and he's like, wow, that's one fried shrimp. That's 500 sit ups. <laughs> Like, okay, you're a little fucking crazy at this point. <laughs> but it's because he was teased really bad as a kid, so now that he is fit, he really does want to stay fit. Because with the theme and the name of the show, you know, he's trying to get revenge on a girl, Miss Aki Aragaki. The cruel princess, a.k.a. the cruel bitch. And you, you meet her right away in season one, and you meet her because he's going to this new school, and the first time you ever see her, this crazy bitch is on top of the school. Humiliating, I want to say Shigeru or something Shigeru, like that. I didn't, I didn't take his name down, I just put, at the time, he was the hottest guy in school, and she was fucking, like, she had a whole banner made, probably from Vistaprint.com, she printed out a banner, what did it say? It was his, like, nickname or some shit? Molio, and the reason why he got rejected was because of... I guess a gender swap manga that he would read or some something like that. And he had like this mole by his neck that was growing hair. Yeah. So that's why he gave the nickname Molio to him. Yeah. So off the bat, you can see that she's just kind of a bitch because she, she hung the banner with his nickname Molio off the school in front of everybody. And everybody's calling her the cruel princess. Nah, the, exactly. Nah, there's nothing sweet about her. <laughs> And Masamune's not going to realize who she is up until they're in class. And he actually does realize, and he thinks in his head, he goes, Wow, I never thought it would be this easy to find her after all these years. So he has been actively searching for her because he wants that revenge. She gave him a nickname. Yes. She called him Pigsfoot when they were kids. We're going to have to get into that because that part confused me. She's she's sad about him going away as a kid, but then he she sent him away by calling him Pigsfoot. This show does that. They have some areas where it's just not clear. Like, it confuses the f*** out of you. It really does. Oh, before we get too far, what do you think about the intro for this? The intro song for this show? The intro, the intro was good, but like what? I said in my... 
put in my notes. I was like, it will not stick in my head. But Doom. as I was listening to to it throughout the show, I started liking it. But it wasn't as great as um, Run a Girlfriend's opening. Run a Girlfriend's was good. This one, I'll give it, if I'm rating just the intro song, 4 out of 10. I thought it was trash. i give it a 6 out of 10. Dang, dude, this guy loves to rate high. I know what your rating for this show is. I think it's really high. So, later in episode one, we're still there. He finds out that Aki Adagaki eats a, a lot, okay? And we talked about this at work, actually. They were never really clear as to why she ate a lot. I know you said it was because, like, she's sad that he went away. Now, I want to clarify, she doesn't realize who he is in, in present day in the show. He knows who she yeah. is. She doesn't know. But, I have it written down in my notes, she actually did explain why she eats so much. She said she has hypoglycemia, which is believable because i have hypoglycemia and if i don't eat i'll get to a point where i'm gonna pass out but i mean for episode one they kind of just set it up to where like he knows her she doesn't know him some shit happens where this guy nicknamed the pudding prince goes to cut her hair off i didn't even get his name yeah me neither he the reason why she called her called him pudding prince is because of her how he liked her legs Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he got jealous of uh masamuni and he's like, oh, Aki fucking likes him. So he goes and, like, was going to cut her hair off. And Masamuni goes and saves the day. Which, I guess, kind of helps his plan of trying to get her to like him. Inevitably, he's going to yeah. fail. Because he goes a whole entire season and never gets her to like his ass. But, you know, it, it slowly helps. Let's just say that this show would get a season two. Do you think if she ever finds out he is Pig's Foot, that that's going to change? you think that that would hold any water on how she actually feels about him? I think so, but... Masamune is still gonna try to still get his revenge. He's gotta try. That's not to say, okay, Aki doesn't know who he is, but her helper knows who he is. Which that is Yoshino. Yeah, Yoshino. So at the end of episode Uh, one, he's got a note in his locker and it literally just says Pigsfoot, which was his nickname given to him as a kid. And you learn later down the line that it was Yoshino that wrote that note and put it in his locker. She's like, hey, I know who you are. But what gets me is how Yoshino figured out who he was and not aki yeah see they they never how did aki not pick up on that if she loved him so much yeah it's kind of weird that aki didn't pick up on it though you spend all this time with him as a kid and even though the way the show made it look you kicked him to the curb i feel like if i knew someone as a child and i saw them later in life even if they had a whole like body transformation i'd still be like shit i think i know you yeah and yoshino picked it up fast Yoshino picked it up fast. Neko picked it up fast, but we, we're going to talk more about her later on. Yeah, Neko's going to be our uh, our star here, what we're really going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, because th- everything oh. with her, I loved. And here's the thing about Masamuni. His last name is different versus when Aki knew him because he did get adopted by his grandpa and changed his last name. So mm-hmm. maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe that fucking did it for him. I just, I, I find it hard to believe that just the last name change is enough for you to be like, oh, I don't know you. <laughs> oh, you look for me. Oh, wait, no, it can't be. Your last name is that. Yeah, oh, you got a different last name. And we're also introduced to Futaba around the same time in episode two. And she's just a class rep, but she does kind of come back and forth in the show a lot. Yeah. And she ends up straight up asking Makabe, like, hey, you want to go see a movie with me? And he's just legit like... No, not really yeah. interested. Turns I'm around. My revenge. <laughs> bro, he, as soon as he turns Futaba down, he turns around and asks Aki if she wants to go see a movie with him. Like, how shitty. Let Futaba <laughs> walk away or something. He does it in front of her face. Uh, he, and then she's like, well, uh, Aki's like, well, maybe, maybe. He's like, can I get your number? She's like, yeah, sure. So he does, she sets up like this scavenger hunt. No, it wasn't his number. As an email, number. maybe? Email. She sets up this fucking scavenger, scavenger hunt. He's hunt. he's all over the school just for him to look at the window and it's her holding up a sign that says denied. What a bitch. <laughs> she went all the way outside. She Okay, first of all, does this bitch have a deal with vistaprint.com? How is she printing out all these signs? Number 1. Number 2, and like just tell him no. We do know that she likes to do everything out in public and Yeah, that's if you haven't which- caught on that's her thing. She's she's known as being the rude girl. She'll give you a, a nickname, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, which Masamune picks up on that because 
it wouldn't couldn't be her because she likes to make everything public. Yeah, exactly. About the about the what? The pig's footnote? Yeah, about the pig's foot footnote. I think I think he already figured it was uh Yoshino. I think he caught on pretty fast. Or, or they might have said it in episode two where he finds out it was her. I know like it was revealed to him kind of quickly. Yeah, uh, he didn't know it was Yoshino because the way she was, she was like clumsy and all that. And he was like, nah, it couldn't be her. Yeah. And then like once he falls into like some kind of trap in a park, he finds out that Yoshino was the one that did that. See, at first I kind of didn't like Yoshino, but the more it went, her character grew on me a little bit. I ended up actually kind of thinking like, all right, she's not bad. Now, I thought she fucked our boy over when she gave him the coffee and he had the shits when they were taking that test. Oh, yeah, that was in episode three. That's in three. Uh, You meet Kojiro and everybody in this one. Yeah, Kojiro and they did like some kind of bet. Mm Mm-hmm. Who had the so, best test scores. Yeah, Masamune was tutoring Kojiro, and Aki was tutoring Yoshino, and whoever got the best score on their test would be uh, the winner. What was the, like, the, the prize? Oh, the winner either gets a date or buys lunch for the other person for a year, and for Makabe, if Masamune, if, that could hurt no, his fucking... I, that could hurt his pockets. That, and Aki has to give him a nickname, and he has to wear it on his back for the rest of the school year. <laughs> Until he graduates. On his shirt. Coach Will was like, I do the same thing. <laughs> I'm gonna wear an embarrassing nickname behind my back. She'd probably just fucking get it made at Vistaprint.com. Probably so. Like, golly, all the fucking signs this chick's making just to give people nicknames. She ends up skipping the test day. She was sick. And then, uh, yeah, so... He he drinks the coffee from Yoshino and just you think it's from that that he gets the shits, but it's not. It's from his mom's food. Mom's cooking. <laughs> like what? Oh, was it the eggs? Yeah, I think it was the eggs. I think it was his the sister eggs. Also texted him, and then we find out that yeah he failed the test because of that. Yeah, well, it ends up being a draw one way or another. Like he failed, and then Aki just didn't show, so it, it's a draw. So he does buy her food all throughout the show so i'm guessing that was part of that wager and they do go on a date aki wears this fucking weird cosplay she gets like really embarrassed about it and then uh the reason why she took it was because yoshino told aki that he had some kind of mental issue she did (laughs) she fucking did Yeah, cause Yo- so Yoshino's like kind of, I guess, playing both sides during this fucking show. So like, she's obviously Aki's helper and whatnot, but she wants to see Masamune get revenge on her. So she's also helping him out. So like, she sets the dates up. She does all this like backhanded shit. She kind of makes her like a bad friend and a bad helper. And then she suggests a movie. They go to the movie. Aki fucking buys out the whole theater. They go to watch it. Aki tells Masamune to not sit close to him. <laughs> oh, <her>. not that far. <laughs> and it turns out it was a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, why'd she rent out the whole theater? Did they ever freaking say? Was she just trying to be fancy? I think it was because she didn't want to see... Anyone else? Any, yeah, any classmates see oh, him. Oh, okay. A, yeah, that makes sense. I think that's the reason why. I guess he kind of like gets cocky during this like yeah. part in the show because he starts to come on way too strong and the whole episode is pretty much spent like with her trying to give his umbrella back and him just being a complete hard ass and just ignoring her oh. and walking past her yeah did you notice whenever uh yoshino is talking to aki back in aki's mansion that there's a bunch of umbrellas in the trash can and yeah masamune's is out i i didn't take can. i didn't take notes on that but i did catch that and i was like hmm it's because well, she it's because she likes him about episode three is how at the end of the date he was like oh yoshino how did you get her to for me to lay on a lap yeah right at the end because obviously what we had said was that yoshino set up that date and everything so right at the end of episode three he's laying on a bench with his head in aki's lap right so he just figured yoshino told aki like you know get a little cute with him or something like that and he he tells her he tells yoshino he goes man that head in the lap thing almost made me fall for her that's some good work 
Yoshino's like, okay. But I think that's when Aki is starting to, real, starting to have feelings for Masamune. Yeah, because in 4 where he starts to like be a douche to her because he's ignoring her and all she's trying to do is give his umbrella back, she literally asks him. She goes, what's up with this stuck-up act? It's because she liked him before. She doesn't like this new stuck-up attitude he got. And then he continues to try. <laughs> yeah, because he's like, he realizes that, I think. He realizes that she's like, mm, I don't like this. And he goes, oh, it was just a test. Part of the plan all along. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> he decides to leave a love letter. Because she asked uh, Masamune why he loves her. <gasps> yeah. So he decides to do that. And then she rips the paper telling him that he is a very selfish person. I uh-huh. guess she wants it in words instead of a letter. Yep, yep, yep. Because I think that comes back into play later where she asks him about his feelings and he just says some, like, lame-ass shit and she is not happy about it. And then she finds out that Masamune and Yoshino have been meeting and they she yeah. thinks that they are having a thing together. <laughs> she sees him at the park or some bullshit and they were, like, getting together to talk. Yeah. And then guess what? Guess what, baby? Best part of the show. We meet Neko. Yes, at the end of episode four, but she doesn't introduce herself until next episode. You just kind of get a glimpse of her in four. Um, Aki Aki almost gets run over by a car, and it just so happens it's Neko in the car with her driver. Masamune winds up saving her. Well, then Neko runs up, and doesn't she, like, say his name or something? Yeah, she knew his name, like, right off the bat. Masamune was saving Aki. He also tells her that he wouldn't know what to do with himself if something would happen to Aki. He did say that. And then they were about to have their moment, and then, bam, (laughs) Neko comes in. Want to know something that I picked off for the show that, like, it's kind of nice, but it's also kind of annoying. There's so many spots in it where they wind up having, like, these real moments where he's given her his real feelings or some bullshit like that and it always gets interrupted by something every god dang time dude so then we meet neko she she comes off kind of crazy i ain't gonna lie her first impressions that you're gonna get off of this girl batshit crazy yeah and then that pisses off aki because masamune really doesn't know who the hell this girl is but aki thinks that oh this is another girl that he probably met and he's probably still talking Probably, I mean, I can see it from Aki's point of view. She feels like Masamune's lying to her. Like, okay, maybe he's playing two fences here. He's talking to her low-key and talking to me. Not gonna happen. Because Aki's a super jealous girl. Any little thing that happens, and then, like, she's not the fucking limelight, this girl is pissed, and she is jealous. Yep, and then, like, the next day, Masamune decides to buy Aki some food to go talk to her some more, but then he gets stopped by Yoshino, who shoots, like, a guess these aerosol bullets at him oh yeah yeah she had like a she was like guarding the door some bullshit yeah and instead of talking to aki he just left the food out there and just Mm -hmm. left it alone i it just blows my mind that how crazy neko came off when you first meet her like she lied first of all she's even though she's not crazy she did lie she did lie and say that she knew masamune because he gave her a coat like three years ago when she was out in the <laughs> yeah. cold. And Masamune is like, uh, bitch, three years ago I was still fat. Definitely was not me. <laughs> and then what, ha- what happened to where she took off running after him? Oh, Masamune grabbed her arm and was like, we need to talk. And right. They, he they drug rushed, her. And then, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> we find out that she was like, slow down. I can't take this. And then she coughs off blood. And then Masamune is like, oh, are you all right? And then, a p- pack of uh, ketchup falls, and he's like, "This bitch." <laughs> yeah, I mean, right here at this point, I'm like, "This bitch." Here we go. It, it's another Ruka. This bitch is absolutely crazy. But the ketchup thing kind of gets explained, not in vivid detail, but they say enough to where you kind of understand why she had the ketchup. She has like some kind of issue with seizures and whatnot. And, uh, the ketchup has a special acid or some shit in it that's gonna, like, balance her out when she feels like she's gonna have a seizure. So she was just, she was on the verge of having one because he was dragging her kind of hard. So she was sucking on some ketchup. Also probably not Man, good, like, not good for him to be dragging a girl around school that didn't have any panties on. Or, or, we we can't no, just after, overlook that fact. After the whole ketchup scene, Masamune tells her that he is in love with Aki and then Neko is like, okay, show me. 
where this girl is at, and then they go to the classroom, and then I guess the window opened up, and then we got to see. Yeah, the that, wind oh, blew. She likes to go commando. <clears throat> commando at school. That's fucking ballsy, man. For a girl, she was wearing a skirt. That's not the same as going commando with fucking blue jeans on, bro. They had another then, scene that they like pointed towards her not wearing underwear where she went to sit on like a bench or some shit and she puts her whole bare ass on it and she has to like get up and fix her skirt so that way her bare ass is not on fucking wood. Yeah, that's in the next episode. Um like why for such a small detail, why do they harp on that so much? You see it twice. That's too much. They could have they could have uh, went without ever putting that in. Because Aki was going to leave the classroom and then she was like, oh, you can, why don't you go talk to your commando girlfriend and then get to <laughs> teach her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they Which get punished. Them to go to, I want to say like a detention or something like that. Yeah. They had to go clean the pool. It's like, I guess it is like a detention. Aki was like, oh, don't even bother talking to me. And so Masamuni grabs the water hose and squirts, squirts uh, her. Aki. I thought Man, that Aki. scene was funny when she had the bucket. She goes, okay, so he yeah, squirts her, and she's like, okay, I'm going to get his ass back. So then she's got a full bucket over her head, and she's literally taking like a two-inch step at a time. And she's like, stay there. I'm going to come <laughs> wet there. you. And he's just like, what? <laughs> and uh, it falls into the pool. And yeah. He, he jumps in to save her. I can't swim. Watch. Here's my question. You ready for this? Ready for this oh, banger? Like this is a banger right here. Why does she have a fucking swimsuit on if she can't swim? Exactly. You just, you just wear it for fun? Was she lying or like, I got questions, bro. I think, I think she really couldn't swim. The water was shallow. Oh, yes, because uh, after he saves her, he goes, she could have just stood up. He was, he was <laughs> thinking that. Like, yeah. This is where the first like big kiss scene happens. Aki asks Masamune to prove that he has feelings for her. And Masamune asks, how can he prove that? And she replies with, you could come mm-hmm. over and kiss me. Yeah. And that ends the episode with mm-hmm. a cliffhanger. You see, that's why I liked this episode so hard. That big cliffhanger at the end. Yeah. That's my kind of shit. That makes you want to watch another episode. But here's a spoiler alert. He goes in for the kiss in episode six, gets uppercutted. Gets just uppercutted and smashes all this that. boy. <laughs> she said, nope. <laughs> and it, you want to know, okay, so here's the part after the pool scene, after he gets his fucking lights rocked. This is where yeah. Neko starts to seem a little normal to me because after that, he has a scene with Neko where she's given him some tea. And she was like, yeah, you were in a, a cold pool. Or, you, or like something about the weather, and she's explaining how this hot tea is going to be really good for his body, and yeah. explains that it helps yeah, her. She get, yeah, she gives him uh, roasted green tea with pickle plum in it. Ah. To help yeah. for dehydration. Yep. And then she offers him multivitamins and magnesium to help him. Yeah, so it's right here where she kind of like goes into detail about that shit, the magnesium and all that. And if you put two and two together, you can figure it out with the ketchup thing. So she wasn't just being weird and sucking on a pack of ketchup. She was doing it to, you know, help her seizure earlier on in the the show. Then we see Masamune was like, if I wouldn't have this revenge, I think I would actually fall in love with her. Yeah, because now, like, now she kind of looks like a rad chick, bro. She's commando at school. She's got some delicious pickle plum tea. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you go for her rather than the girl who's fucking uppercutting you in the pool? Hundred percent would go for her. And then after that, he asks uh, Neko what she likes about him. Uh huh. And then she replies because he is so modest, which. Makes him like, oh shit, that was actually a good answer. Yeah, he gets real starstruck by her answer. And then after that scene, we see Yoshino stalking Neko. She does stalk Neko, true that. I was trying to put it together in my notes because I'm looking at it. Uh, I was up to where like they went to his house, but she does, Yoshino does stalk Neko for a while. She finds out that Yoshino is stalking her, but then gets interrupted by... Freaking Masamune's <laughs> mom. His mom. It was like, oh, I realized those uniforms. You go to the same 
School has my Masamune. Dude, the, oh, the, then you could come over to my house and help me cook. The crazy bitch invited them over to his house. This had me and this had me blown Master away. Master Mune was just like, oh, I'm going to have a peaceful time. I'm going to be working out at my house. Enters, knows she's cooking it in. Bam, <laughs> sees Yoshino and <laughs> freaking Neko. He's got to he's got to spend the fucking afternoon or the evening with both of those girls, which I mean, Need granted, neither of I'd say neither of those girls is a bad option to be hanging out with at your house cuz at least it's not fucking Aki. At this point I don't like Aki anymore in the show. Yeah. I'm and 100% then, uh, Neko. Masamune grabs Yoshino, brings her to his room, and sort of acts and like, how, why the f- are y'all here? Yeah. And Yoshino tells Masamune the whole story. Yeah, explains what happened with his mom. Yeah, and doesn't like Neko try to go in? And he's oh, like, huh? He like Neko pushes her out. in yeah. to go to try to find him to tell, tell them that the food is ready. And then he flips out and was like, I didn't tell you to come in my room or anything. I guess he didn't want for her to know about the picture that he has in his room. I think it's because he had some, just like his room was messy and he didn't want her to see or some bullshit. Because he like harped on it for a little bit. Which I mean, she ends up seeing anyways because she does go back in his room and fucking steals the picture you were just talking about. It's a picture of uh, him and Aki as kids. And she took it. Yeah. She just straight up fucking stole that man's shit. Well, then they have like this big firework thing at the actually, end. Actually, it was the whole firework thing. And then after that, we see Masamune and Yoshino at the bu- like downstairs. But Neko went change in the bathroom. Then we see Neko come across his room, which that's the part where she takes his picture. See, like as much as I like her at this point in the show, that's that's a little crazy to me. And then like, after she leaves, Masamune is like. Oh, would you mind me walking with you, Yoshino, to like maybe a taxi? And as they're walking, Yoshino is like, try not to fall for her spell. Because I think Yoshino is seeing that Masamune is actually falling for her. I mean, who wouldn't? She's cool as fuck. And then, of course, at the end of the episode, we see Neko holding a photo of young Masamune and young Aki. Yep. Stole that bitch. Episode 7, trash. Episode 7 was basically a freaking... A uh, whole filler. Uh, uh, you know how, like, okay, they'll put, you know, 10 minutes of filler and get back to the story. No, these motherfuckers put a whole episode of a filller. They didn't need it at all. They went yeah. to, like, a fucking this- family resort beach island because summer started. First, uh, Masamune was going to ask Aki, oh, would you mind coming over here? But then Aki was like, nah, I'm going to my private island that my dad owns, and I'm going to ask Kojiro. But then Kojiro was like... I'm not going unless Masamune comes. And then we see freaking Neko is like, if y'all are going, I'm going. And then the class rep is like, if y'all are going, I'm going. So all of them ended up going. Fucking everybody got sucked into it. <laughs> and of course, you meet um, Aki's father's secretary. She's kind of weird because she doesn't like Masamune at first, but I think by the end of it, she was starting to come around. Like when he carried her ass home or whatever. It's like, oh, maybe then, he's not like, so bad. When we first see her, she's like, okay, let me see her friends. Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> and she's like, oh, sh- whispering to Aki. And then we see Kojo is like, I'm also a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we said anything about uh, Kojiro. Kojiro is a guy, but kind of dresses feminine. So from from visual it, appearance, I did think that he was a girl when I first saw. Of course, before the opening, uh, Yoshino was like, well, if you don't make Aki fall in love with you, yeah, I'm I not will tell him no more. everything. Yeah, yeah. I and guess that was like that was probably the only hype moment of episode hype, seven. Hype moment, yeah. Masamune actually mans up and it's like, "I'm her boyfriend," and then everybody freaks the f- out, and then Aki decides to play along, as we see throughout the whole episode. Yep, that's enough of that episode because yeah. we basically went over everything. Episode literally from front to back of that whole episode. It's it's so boring. And already when I got to this point, like in episode seven, I was already like not wanting to watch the show anymore. I was struggling with it. And guess and I what? Was like it gets better. It gets better. It, 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 you were like, you it were. And, and guess what? It only really got better for like one episode, and then it was downhill again. 
uh, at episode 10, it was definitely declining hard. I think episode eight for me was, uh, as hype as episode five. Cause I think that's when he goes to Neko's house. Yes, episode eight is when eight was he finds out that his picture is missing. She Neko calls Makabe and asks if he's going to go to the water park with Futaba, uh, and they they wound up like meeting up at her house. And this motherfucker's like, "Oh, <laughs> hey," she's like, "Come on in, I'll make you some tea." He's like, "Cool, cool, I got to use the restroom." She's like, "All right." Well, instead of going to the restroom, boom, goes right into her room. He's like, you want to steal, you want to steal from me? I'm going to steal from you, bitch. So he's in there. And, and then uh, he sees the manga, the manga collection. It. it was the same manga collection that he had in his room. She wound up like noticing it when she was there. I was like, oh shit, had her. Now she's rich now, so they have helpers and shit. She got her helper to go buy the entire collection you know do you here's the here's the thing people you know how fucking expensive manga is (laughs) she made her helper go buy all of those books that shit had to be at least a thousand dollars yes that's fucking that shit crazy yeah then neko finds out that he was in his room Mm -hmm. he just straight up asked her about the picture he's like hey did you take a picture out of my room and she's like and she admits it and takes it out takes takes it out of where takes it out of where <laughs> i wouldn't say bra because she goes commando. it was it was straight up under her titty between the tits that's a terrible place to keep a, a polaroid picture it's gonna get all sweaty it's gonna start falling apart it was folded <laughs> yep shit gets a little uh shit gets a little spicy after that too they end up kissing yeah i thought they were gonna fuck i really did like she, she already ain't got I no draws on homie he got a little crazy right here. Like, after yeah, they kiss and they like, almost fuck, he's like, I know you don't really care about me. Did you catch that? Yes, he figures out that she couldn't hide her disparity or some shit like that between her words and her thoughts and proceeds mm-hmm. to tell her that her love for him is a lie and takes back the, his photo. Hmm. I didn't catch all that. That it, that whole scene, like, because my brain was already just still still stuck on the fact that they should have just banged, you know? <laughs> I knew it. So, <laughs> I knew it. You were like, just bang, just bang, 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 at, bang, at the, bang, bang. At, at the point where he says, I know you really don't like me, my brain is still going, why didn't you fuck? Why didn't you fuck? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Bro, you're just th- like my boy Kazuya. Come on, oh, just, man. An- we're dealing with another case of the pussies, man. Where a guy just won't get it in. I- if y'all are gonna start recommending shows, I want to see these dudes getting it in when they're at the water park. Literally in the next scene after he's after leaving Neko's house, doesn't this dude just looks like complete dog shit in the next scene? Yeah. <laughs> you-, you could tell he just been through some shit. As they're enjoying the water park. We see that Aki is focusing on Masamune because Masamune looks like he's not actually enjoying himself. Yeah, he was having a bad time. Just just a lot going through his head, more than likely. I mean, you just come off of that, doing that with Neko, and you're like, God damn. Yeah, she also notices his, his behavior. Oh, and fuck. Masamune begin to feel guilty about what he did. I think we jumped a little too hard. We forgot to mention that, like, after he says to Neko, like, I know you really don't like me, he goes to leave, and uh, yeah. she asks, who's he, who, who are you choosing? Something along those lines, and he's like, it's, it's Aki. And she's like, oh, fuck. He, so he rejects like, her, basically. And she's like, so this is how it feels to have your heart broken. Yes, that that's very important. I thought we might need to backtrack to that, because... uh some shit goes down at the water park where you find out this bitch goes missing. And of course, after the park, we see Neko's helper. Yes. Her, I, I had her name written down. I don't remember. I think it started with an S. And really not important because we don't see her enough for yeah. her to be a big player. Then she confronts Masamune at Axe asking... What did he do to Neko? Because Uh she has been missing for several hours. We then find out she suffers with seizures. But that still just blows my mind. Like, several hours? She could be at work. She could have a secret fucking job for all you know. Several hours to me is not enough time for you to go fucking batshit crazy on people and be like, Where is she? Who is this lady, Batman? And then, of course, at the end of the episode, we find out that uh, Masamune tells her that 
he, he rejected, rejected her. her for Anki, and that just cuts it. And then, of course, the next episode is the same well, shit, but nobody gives a f- about he, what he just said. He straight up says it. He's like, yeah, I rejected her um, because I like Aki Aragaki, and she's standing right there. The whole group of friends is right there, and guess what? Nobody bats a fucking eye. They're like, okay. And then, like, you, we see everybody go into the car except for Masamune. Yep. I think Aki took a shot at Masamune right there because I think she was kind of, like, still just in shock about everything because she offered everyone to ride or walk. And he, she says, y'all can ride with me or y'all can walk with Makabe. And she turns and looks at him and goes, since you already know the way to her apartment because oh shit. yeah because during that during that scene he had admitted well i was at her apartment a few days ago or like an hour yeah. ago or so and aki's just like oh really so she took a big really? shot at him right there and then of course after that we see everybody trying to find her but then we see masamune uh going to, back to school because he mm-hmm. realized that maybe yeah. this would be this would be the last place she would go and then we see aki Shows up also, there also. Here's the a big the, question yeah, we've been is, waiting for. The big question comes up right here. Masamune axes Aki if pig's foot means anything to you. That's, but before she could reply, she gets interrupted by paper airplane. A paper airplane. Guess where it was Hit coming him from? Hit in the head. It's coming from the roof. And as they go, they see Neko on top of the roof. I want to say. Masamune realizes like what's going on here because he says oh it's just like the scene from book three of the manga that they both had yeah like yeah, the love romance manga it gets to a flashback from when Neko tells him that she had read volume three a million times ah. that was the part where yeah uh, the character from the manga was throwing paper airplanes it had they had love notes on oh, love too. notes love notes mm-hmm. and I think hers it was just I love you or some. I think so. I think they showed one. Is she also like, okay, so when they get to her on the roof, bitch just fucking passes out. This is where the show did a poor job of kind of explaining what was happening. Like, yeah, she's sick. I get it. But the way that she didn't take her pills, it could have been. But the way my brain interpreted that whole scene was that she was trying to kill herself. And I thought maybe she overdosed on some drugs up there and was like about to die yeah because her helper was like she hasn't taken any of her medicine because her medicine is back at the appointment yeah she did say this, that that's this, a good this catch was the best, this was the best part in the whole entire anime I yeah I, I feel like this was this was stronger than the actual ending this made me want masamune and neko to ship actually ship yeah be together yeah, I think I, I was down for that long before this part. I think I was down for that when they were in her room. Because, like, I had already established that she was kind of a cool chick, down to earth. You know, she's not going to punch you if you try to kiss her. Obviously, because he kissed her. And, like, that's a plus in my book. She likes the same mangas you like. All around, just a better choice. At Basically, what, they have the same personality. Yeah. And, like, this dude is so fixated on getting his fucking shitty little revenge that now he's going to let a good chick go? Yeah, right. I'm going back over to her house when she gets out of that hospital. I'm smashing, bro. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, they go to the hospital after the yes, roof scene because uh, she passed out. So a lot of shit happens here. Neko wants to talk to Aki, which we see that. And then we see Masamune begins questioning himself. Yeah. Like feel, feeling guilty. Feeling real guilty. The right thing to do. And then after Aki leaves... Aki Nick tells Masamune, uh, Masamune that he wants that to talk it was to him. His turn. Then, then a Nick lot was... gets a lot gets unfolded right here. Yes. Right at the beginning, Neko tells Masamune that they should talk about the past, and then we find out that she has to go overseas to help her with her sickness. But, but there yeah, might have be a, a chance that she won't be cured. She asks her grandpa basically uh, that be- before she gets shipped out overseas to have her surgery to get her shit fixed, that he give her at least one chance, one little chance to fall in love. And he's like, well, yeah, I guess so. And uh, apparently according to this goddamn show, Masamune got picked because in their area of the world, it's, it's a custom for rich families to do this. They just take apparently a bunch of pictures of guys who would be suitable yeah. quarters and they just put it in a pile and you just stick your hand in and pull one out. 
That's so weird to me. And then after that whole scene, he asks, is, how did it feel to fall in love? And she replies with, it was more fun than she can imagine. But like, dude, the the conversation they had in the hospital, him and Neko gets to this dude. Because when he walks out that bitch, he walks right past the hockey. He doesn't say a word. This, this, this is where it almost got me. Okay. She then tells him that she will be going far away and also tells Masamune, thank you for the loving memories. And then after that, we see Aki and Neko's part of the conversation, what they were talking about. And then we also see Neko asking Aki, why do you doubt Masamune's love for you? His motives are true. And then uh, we see Aki beginning to think about giving in to Masamune that's when we find out that she was in love with him back when they were kids that neko was aki was Ah. because throughout this whole thing we thought that she just didn't like him yeah that part still bothers me because the show does not clarify that situation like she was she calls him pig's foot and all this shit and sends him off as kids but then as an adult she's depressed because this kid pig's foot left her as a kid like the show did a terrible job at clarifying all that. Did yeah, you didn't think so? Yeah, it gave like a terrible uh explanation, but like I guess they were hoping for a season two, which I don't think there's ever gonna I be don't, a season yeah, two. I don't think we're gonna see a season two. We're also talking like um, this was the end of the season, but it wasn't. There's still like three more episodes to go, which I didn't even take notes anymore. At this point, because like you can just mash all three episodes into one because of, again, going back to how much filler they put into this show. And then like after the whole hospital scene, we see Aki uh, thinking about Masamune and all this and that. And then she gets confronted by this stranger, which stranger. He calls himself masamune he said he said that was a nickname he's had his whole life i just called the little asshole fatty (laughs) little (laughs) asshole fatty and little asshole fatty uh because the the only time i referred to him in my notes i I put him down as fatty but he's he comes in and he claims to be the authentic pig's foot from back in the day has a letter from his grandpa saying that him and uh, aki need to get married or they're supposed to get married so she just kind of goes with it because in their culture that's just how it goes you know with arranged marriages and whatnot so now you just got this little fat asshole walking around with aki while the real fucking uh, Masamune is out in the mountains doing like 500 push-ups to get fit again, get his mind back on track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he comes back to school and sees this guy with her, and he's just like, "What the fuck?" And he's like, "Fatty's calling her sweetheart." Giant. I hate this guy. I hate the little. <laughs> and guess what? Spoiler alert: He's not even the real Masamune. He's yeah, a fraud. He's acting like it. His family, his yeah, his family. family's poor. And one way or another, somebody told him, oh, you look like this kid or and showed him like oh, a picture. It was, it was um, the secretary later. Oh, right. The secretary, the de- the secretary yeah. from the island showed him yes. and was like, yo, wow. My well, one way ticket. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he saw dollar signs because he's like, you know what? I am Masamune. <laughs> I am Masamune. How do you um- and, like, he knows. He knows that Aki's fucking out of his league. He tells that to her friends when her friends didn't like him. He's like, look, I'm just like, here to help my family. Yeah. I ain't gonna kiss the bitch. I ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah, and then that leaves Aki's friends liking him more. And then yeah. hating must, uh, actual Masamune. Hating this dude. There, I mean... It really wasn't much to talk about because it was just... Dude, that's like, why I, I, so nine. It just gotten so stupid. Here's the thing for me: like they should have just ended it at they, episode nine. They should have ended it at nine, and that leaves plenty of room for a season two. Season two. I feel like with ten, eleven, and twelve, they completely rushed it. Yeah. Because, like, there's nothing to talk about. The fat kid comes in. He's not actually Masamune. He's just trying to help his family who's poor. They all go to school together. Everyone likes the fatty. Everyone starts hating the real Masamune. They have a school play that's coming about. And 
obviously Fatty and the real Masamune are on different sides of the, there's like two classes that are doing two different plays and they, they make like a wager. Whoever's class wins gets to dance with Aki. It's just, it, it was a real shit show in the last three episodes. It's just, like it was like a class 1A and class 1B. Some it's shit so, like that. it's so poorly written, dude. He was like, oh, uh, if I win, I get to dance with Aki. But if you win, you get to dance with Aki. Yeah, like, all right, you little and fat then, fuck. Why are you excited? You're going to marry her anyways. <laughs> then, like, <laughs> Just let me dance with her. <laughs> we see Masamune starting to feel sick. Yeah, he gets like a cold or some shit. Uh, so, so look, here, here it is. Boil it down to you. One way or another. Okay. A lot of shit goes down, but I'm going to simplify it. I don't want to get too into detail because I do want you yeah. to go watch this show, even though it's ass, and, and tell us what you think. But Fatty's class ends up winning, but not because Fatty was in there. Basically, Class A kidnapped Masamune, the real Masamune, and then Yoshino kidnapped Fatty to help Class B. Well, Masamune gets out, and they still have Fatty locked up, so... When the play is about to fail because it's like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and they're like, "We don't have a prince." And then Aki was like, "You know what? The show must go on." Even yeah, Aki. Aki wanted prince. to keep. She didn't. She didn't want to surrender. Basically, she was like, "We're gonna just yeah. do this fucking play because I'm not surrendering." So the play was gonna just end with Snow White dying because there wouldn't be a prince to kiss her. And then guess what? You can you can all guess it. Masamune, Masamune comes death. in as the prince for Class A. Actually kisses her. Sickness. We see the sickness starting to take in. Yeah, he like and falls like, on stage. He's, he's sloppy. And then Yoshino helps him up. Yeah. She like pushes him towards Aki and shit. And he was supposed to pretend kiss her. Guess what? Really did kiss her. Yes. And then and then guess what? Gets yes, his fucking... <laughs> gets uppercutted again. <laughs> That's pretty much the back end of the show. It's so like, ass. Was, we just explained like what episode 10, 11, and a little bit of twelve right there. Yeah. And like after the show, we find out that class class Aki's class one. Yeah, class A ends up seen, winning. We seen Fatty is like, oh, um, I could do your, be your prince, <laughs> and then They're like, like fuck the no. Class rep is like, fuck no. <laughs> they did not want his ass to be. In their play. So they decided to do a karaoke, which the class rep song, which I caught on, was the actually the intro of yeah. Masamune Kun's Revenge. And then Masamune sings the outro, which we hear like the front office get a call and then he answers and it's just them like screaming for help, like help. <laughs> it's because this dude can't sing. He's an ass vocalist. Then he looks at his score and he's like, "Oh man, I'm, I should do, I should do this. I burned so much calories." Oh my god, dude! Like, what a fucking shit ending to a show. I and hate like, that. After that, we see Aki and Masamune together talking on like some kind of bench in a park. Mm-hmm. Then after they have their moment, Aki asks Masume, "How could she make it up to him for the way she?" Um, was acting towards Masamune, and Masamune tells her to kiss him. And Aki <laughs> agrees, but only if he closes his eyes. <laughs> and then, I guess it was an ice cream that she puts in his mouth. Yeah, she just fucking shoves it in there, too. Like, bitch, you could have got this off the ground, for all I know. At the end of the show, we see that there will be a class trip to France. Paris. Yeah, Paris, France. Yeah. I, I Quoting, guess they... For I guess a they, season two. I, yeah, I guess they put that in there for a season two, but I'm gonna say safely that we probably won't get a season two. Yeah, we probably won't. And but that and that's literally the end of the season, guys. That's literally the end. Like episode seven, episode what was it, ten and eleven and twelve was kind of like a downgrade. Ass. Did not need it. Here's Ass. the thing. Here's the thing. Think of it like this: we explained a twelve episode season in probably like an hour <laughs> they did not need all the fillers that they put in that show if they're gonna end it off like that then he doesn't get his revenge so yeah is he? Like but for, you, you like did for the manga you, i can understand the yeah manga, you did the say the manga, manga keeps going so maybe that no, was the like, thing maybe they like just... people that only watch anime they're gonna be like okay what happens next 
nothing. Well, when are we gonna it was, it's a shit anything, show, they... so they don't give a fuck because nobody wants to see a season two of this. I think there was a rumor saying that it was coming back in 2020 or 2021, but due to Corona, change of plans. Hmm. That's. Michelle, they're about to, but miss to be their honest, mark. how they should end this was like, oh, Aki starting like a uh, freaking Masamune. Oh, Masamune, just cheat on Aki for Neko. There we go. End of story. Bam. Bro, just grow some fucking balls. Realize that you're the better person. You don't need your sh- fucking shitty revenge. And get with Neko, the chick that's right for you. And her family's fucking loaded. Obviously, they bought 13 manga books in one go. (laughs) We all know how expensive that is. (laughs) Just because of a manga book? (laughs) Yeah, dude, she bought a whole entire series in one go. Do you know how expensive that is? She has the same personality as you. She's literally perfect for him. Yeah, and then... No, I gotta do this for my revenge. Fuck your revenge! So, (laughs) So, overall, in my book... I'm going to give this a five. In my book, I give it a six. Give it a six? Yeah. <sighs> it, it I, th- I thought lower. you said a six and a it half. Been... I thought you were saying a six and a half earlier. Well, after talking about it, I realized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. It would have been lower, but the whole part about Neko was the reason why it picked yeah, it back up. That one character saved it... the entire show. Yes. If they didn't have that character in there and they just put some other filler bullshit, this would literally be a one or a two out of ten. I so, would, I mean, I the, com- the common five. middle ground will probably be like five and a half, but we'll probably give it a six on the site just to be there. Yeah. It's just, it's a very mediocre show. Watchable, but not something that you're going to probably remember and recommend to people when they ask for good shit to watch. What's you talking about? What's you talking about? The only rememberable thing about this is freaking Neko. Yeah, I remember that she don't wear panties to school. She sucks ketchup out of the packets. <laughs> She can buy, like, 36 mangas with one trip to Barnes & Noble. Like, perfect. <laughs> she likes to put your photos between her boobs. Oh, true that, bro. True that. But, yeah, there likes, you have uh, it, guys. Are you down in her bed? <laughs> she likes that kiss. Damn. I mean, she was probably she was probably willing to fuck. I ain't gonna lie, but he wasn't about it because he's hung up on old Aki. His fucking revenge. My God, what a pussy. Yeah, what a pussy. <laughs> Once again, our main character is just a straight up pussy. Pussy. Well, there you have it, guys. Our review episode of Masa Mune Kun's Revenge. Hell yeah. Please, please don't ever suggest us any shitty shows like this ever again. We want bangers <laughs> from now on. Like the plot and all that sounded good. Yeah. They wrote it, I won't say poorly, they wrote it lazily. Because they, they had more fillers than there were actual plot lines. They took the cheap and lazy way out. In the manga, it probably is better in the manga. I mean, I can imagine things get a little pricey when you're like, animating shit. Yeah. Because, like, sometimes the manga is better than the anime, and then sometimes the anime is better than the manga, and then sometimes the manga is and the anime, like, like have different endings, and it's everything's different. I'm going to tell you this much. I ain't going to be reading that shit. Just like the last time. Just throw up some suggestions in the site, on the comments, or join our Discord and give us suggestions there. Email it to us, uh, animagpodcast at gmail.com. And we'll we'll kind of, we'll give it a couple of weeks to breathe and then we'll go through them and see, see what we've got. Yeah. But like, we might I'm, do a podcast next week. I mean, yeah, we don't have to just make it all about anime, all but reviews. Yeah, they're still but, probably wondering when the vlog is, though. Never. We're gonna have to wait until like a check comes in. I mean, now I'm about to go buy a PS5. We're gonna, we're gonna have to wait for like two checks to come in. <laughs> well, we did it, guys. Give us some good reviews. Uh, we're we're gonna try to stay away from like romance type stuff for the next one. That's all we did. <laughs> yeah, we've done two so far, and they've both been romance type shows. And I, I'm getting burnt out on them. I want something good. Some action. Some action. Skate the Infinity. Bible Black. Something good, man. I did hear. You. Yeah, you did want to watch Skate Infinity, which I did. They announced that they are gonna be doing a second season. Okay. 
I mean, yeah. we're we're not gonna pick it just because I want to watch it, but I can put it in the fucking randomizer that's gonna pick what we'll watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna be really mad if it picks a romance show. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as usual, guys, thanks for listening. We love having y'all comment, and we love seeing all the views that the podcast is getting. It's really rolling pretty good. I mean, better than some people's rival podcasts are going. If you know they can stay out of jail, but that's that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> not i have to bleep that out you can't be promoting shit on this podcast now it's bleep like go ahead go ahead promote your youtube channel for free what is it hey guys be sure to subscribe to my youtube channel <laughs> see they'll never know they'll never know what you said because I, I had to bleep it out i'm shouting out your own channel i know he, he literally shouted my channel but i'm gonna bleep it because we have it <laughs> We have our first official rule for this podcast is that we don't shout any other people's shit out. Or they get... Oh, yeah, they get those. They just get it in editing so it's not so shitty and live on the soundboard. But thank you guys for listening. Uh, We're going to see you guys in the comments and hopefully see you guys in a new episode next week sometime or, or maybe the week after that. It just depends. You never know. Thank you guys for listening and we will see you later. Sayonara. Thank you for listening. Be sure to visit our website at www.animag.org. See you next time.